Well, you're almost to the point where you're going to start writing programs. However, before you do that, I'm going to throw in a little teaser here. It's a little demonstration using the simulator, and I'm jumping way ahead to a lab project for a garage door opener, and I'm going to demonstrate that lab project with the simulator just to kind of pique your interest a little bit and give you a little pull with the push. Let's look at it. One more thing we want to do with the simulator, and that is we want to run it with a little application. Now, I understand that most of you that are watching this may be brand new to PLCs and you're looking at this and maybe you know that's ladder logic diagrams, relay logic, but this is way ahead of where we're at in the course. But I'm jumping ahead just to demonstrate the simulator for those of you that are watching it just for the simulator. Now this is a garage door opener. We have an up and a down push button. It's a momentary. You see we have a seal in. We have a stop push button. Now you see right now that instruction is false. That's because by default that input is off. I'm going to go turn on input zero right over here. And you see now that's true. Now the reason I turn it on is because that stop push button in the real world is a normally closed push button which means there's continuity to that terminal strip zero, 00 for an input. So the stop button is a normally closed push button, which means that the input is on, except when you click on the stop button like this. Push the button, release the button. So you see that what we're missing now to go up or down is the limit switches. Both of these being false simultaneously is impossible. These are normally closed limit switches, so one of them or both of them is going to be closed. And these would be on, just like this stop push button is. It's normally closed. These are both, both normally closed. And when you trip the limit switches up or down, you open the contact. So let's just say that we are down, which means that we can run the motor up. So the up limit switch right there would be made. That's input five. I'm going to turn that on over here on the simulator. So if the input switch has continuity, that means that it is not tripped. If the down limit switch does not have continuity, that means it's tripped. So this allows us to turn on input one and have the motor go up. Now there's some other things here that are missing. The other one is the photo eye, the safety photo eye. It is also a fail safe, so it would be on as well. So we go to input three and we turn that on. At this point, we have our safeties turned on. And you'll notice in this rung, this timer is timing out. That's what controls the garage door light. See the garage door light right there? It's on right now. And when the timer times out, this goes false and then back true again, because when that went off, this became false and it reset the timer. We don't want to get hung up on the logic here. But my point is, you can see how I am operating, operating this garage door simulation, this code that has real outputs, I can operate it with the simulator. So let's go back up here. This is a safety, both push buttons pressed. If I turn on both push buttons simultaneously, so they're both on at the exact same time, and of course the operator would have to be dinking around to do that. Uh, when I write code and put in my safeties, I like to make it unpleasant for any operator who monkeys around seeing what they can trick the system into doing. So if they do push the up and the down simultaneously, now remember, if they pushed one, move their finger, and pushed the other, it only takes a couple microseconds to reset this. So this couldn't happen by accident. They had to press both, both buttons simultaneously. That then seals in, both push buttons press, seals that in through the stop button. If I unclick one of these, or both, because keep in mind that input one and input two, those are push buttons, momentary. So I'll release those, but you see we still have the fault, both push buttons pressed. So the operator took his finger off the two buttons, and now he can't get the thing to run. That's because he can't see, he, she can't see in the logic that this bit is locked in. And when we trigger the stop button, which is input zero, go over, turn it off by pressing it, and then let it go back on. When it closes, now we've cleared that fault. Now we can go up. So if we turn on input one, 
the motor up is going. We can turn the input one back off because remember that's a momentary, this is a ceiling. This will continue to go up. And by the way, if it's going up right now, then input four is going to change state because remember the garage door comes off the limit switch that says it's down. So for the moment, both of these are true. As it keeps going up, it's going to trip five when it gets to the top and motor up shuts off. Now you can tell it to go down by turning on input two and then turn it right back off because remember this is a momentary. Input five will go on as soon as the door leaves that position and at some point it will trip input four when it gets all the way down. If we were halfway in between, right now we can go back up. So input one, we're going up. We change input four. They're both on because the door's in the middle. So if we hit stop and stop the door part way up, now we can go in either direction because, because neither limit switch is tripped. So you can go in either direction, up or down. Now your garage door at home's got one button on it. There's a little bit more logic to make a single button garage door work. We're not going to worry about it. Let's go ahead and close this puppy. Turn on input two. We will untrip this switch when it gets down. Four. Okay, it stop. Now notice that the light stays on until the input down button is off. And the reason that's that case is because the conditions that we have to start this timer are any interruption in the output to light bit. In other words, if it goes on or off, you know, if, if it goes on and if there's any interruption in the state of these items, it's going to change that timer's activity. And when the timer times out, that bit goes false, that goes off, this goes false, and then, sh and then resets the timer. So it's waiting for the next um, activity by the whoever operates the garage door. That's the garage door opener. I'm going to show you something. So I'm going to stop the simulator, which means that removed it. Okay, see it's no longer in existence. Now I'm going to reinitiate it, but it's not on. It's the instance of this device, this code and data structure is created in RAM, but it's not actually running. Before I turn it on, I'm going to go to device, configure IO wiring, and I can add wiring. In other words, I can wire an output to an input. Now, I'm not going to use output zero. Let's, what's the uh, motor? Okay, motor up, output zero. But I don't want that to do anything with digital input zero. So I'm going to pick something different. I'll just pick one that we know we're not using, 12. Okay, and I can put in a delay and we'll make it um, 5,000 milliseconds. Okay. Notice now that I have a little tick mark, and when I put the mouse over it, you see the wire? It goes from output 0 to input 12. So if output 0 turns on, input 12 turns on. So now let's turn on this simulator. We get our message. I got 24 hours, you got 10 minutes. Right now it shows that it's disconnected, so we'll connect it. So we can see the code. We can see that output two is on, that's the light. And the reason the light is on is because we disturbed some of these. We have to go turn on the input zero. So we have a normal close stop push button. We have to turn on four or five. I'm going to turn on five, meaning that it's not tripped. And then we have to do the safety the photo eye safety. So we go down here and we turn on input three. Okay, That sets us up for normal operation. What I wanted to show you was that if I turn on output zero, which is the motor up, watch what happens over here on input 12. So I'll turn this on, input one, back off, and notice that input 12 is now on because output 0 is on. That's that wiring. So, so what you can do is to simulate a, a reaction by your process to a change of output. And notice that I'm going from output 0 directly into input 12. Now I put a delay in there of 5 seconds. 
that could be output zero. Let's say that's a solenoid valve to extend a cylinder, and the cylinder takes five seconds to extend and make the extended proc switch come on. That's exactly what you have right here. Pretty cool. I know this is jumping way ahead, but uh, this should, should whet your whistle or whet your appetite for what's to come. We wanted to kind of bump ahead with this little demonstration because once you get to this point, you're going to start having fun because you're going to start programming in, in a way that you think it's going to work. And then when it really works, then you get excited and you jump up and do a little jig. So let's uh, keep moving in on this and we'll see you in the next session. Thank you.